One of the things that an integral approach does most primarily is try to look at the perspectives available to human beings. So we have a first person perspective. First person means the person speaking. Second person means the person being spoken to. And third person means the person or thing being spoken about. Now you can add a fourth person perspective and fifth and it can be very complicated. Uh, one of the things that we do to get really complicated is say that you can have a first, second, or third person view of a first, second, or third person view of a first, second, or third person view. Now we do that all the time. Actually, by the time um, adult or, or, or people are 11, 12, 13 years old, it's coming up for you. So you, you'll get this over third, set soon. First, yeah. second, third person. Don't we follow goes, that? First, yeah, third yeah, yeah, person, yeah. second, third right. Okay, got it. If, if we say something like, um, oh, I just, I just met a, a girl do you think she likes me? Now that's already taking a third person view of a second person view of a first person view. We do it all the time. We, do, we take these perspectives all the time. Now what we found in an integral approach is if you just simply take all of those perspectives, you can generate a, a map that shows how they all relate and, and in fact allows all of these different methodologies to occur. Science tends to be a third person view of a third person view of a third person. So it's a very, very impersonal kind of approach. What Genpo Roshi was doing when he started his first person view of your own first person awareness and meditation and contemplation tends to do that. So we don't at the beginning make any judgment about whether something is right or wrong. We just say here's the perspective that sees it that way. And once you do that you end up inhabiting or allowing all of these different perspectives to arise. And as a spiritual practice it dawns on you that these are all perspectives that God's taking. These are all perspectives that your own primordial self is taking as it looks at and manifests the world of your own being. Now, what we're talking about, in a sense, the relative world for a moment, why something bad happens to this finite thing. And I don't want to, I don't want to just jump too quickly into you know, the great perfection, well, it's all happening as it should be happening and so on. Um, the, the four quadrants are simply four of the most common perspectives that people take. And Diane mentioned them as I, we, it, and its. And if you actually look at the quadrants in the upper right quadrant, which is simply how we lay it out, there are things like atoms, molecules, cells, neurophysiology, dopamine, serotonin, and all the things that you can see in a third person view if you take a scientific view of things. Lower right quadrant is systems theory. Lower left quadrant is the intersubjective we. Now this we actually is extraordinary. It's probably of I, we, it. We is the most amazing, absolutely amazing um, perspective that we can have. Because somehow if we're talking and they say, do you understand me? You say, yes, I understand you. So we understand each other. Yes, we understand each other. Somehow perspectives overlap and agree in a, in a way that we both agree that they do. Now that we is extraordinary. God, God manifests in, in, in all of these. But you can particularly look for God in the we because it's, it's a miracle of just absolute astonishing proportions. <laughs>